In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about enlarging the crankshaft flywheel bolts so that way it can handle more power. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Matt. Let's go ahead and start working on the cruise again. One of the things we need to do is remove the bolts we sheared off from inside the crank shaft. <laughs> I got a drill bit, some cutting oil, and a screw extractor. So let's see if we can't remove these things. Fingers crossed, this is gonna be fun. All right, let's drill and remove these bolts. Well, um, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> I broke my screw extractor. Those things are in there pretty damn well. We almost have this thing completely drilled out. And what I'm doing is essentially drilling kind of a, a pilot hole and just kind of stepping it up using a dial caliper to put a little piece of tape so that way I get the same depth. Here's the next bit that I'm currently working with and then we'll step it up to this big guy over here in which we'll drill and tap it for 12 millimeters by 1.25. And I'll show you how I'm doing this. I'm just using a little bit of cutting oil, just taking my time with it. Make sure we don't tear up our hardened bit I've already got the studs drilled out of five of them and we're working on number six and what you can see right here Here's the the little initial hole or pilot hole and we're just getting these things as center as we can And I'm just kind of just really taking my time with it And I'm using the drill to Make sure I'm getting nice and centered on there. I know I'm angled up just a little bit but that's because this one was off just slightly and I'm just trying to get my initial cut somewhat centered. That way I can send it home. And I'm not using a ton of pressure, just enough to let it cut. Not super fast RPMs. And at this point I'll toss a little more on a little more cutting lube. We'll just keep drilling until we bottom that tape out. After all, we still do have to go up one more size. And I'll tell you my plan for that, for getting everything lined up and as straight as possible. And I can feel as I get to the end of what's left of this bolt because it'll just really want to grab and pull that junk out. There we go, pulled a big old chunk out. There we go, it snapped through that bolt. And we're all finished. Now once we get our flywheel on there, we'll tap it for the 12 millimeter size by 1.25. We'll put her back together. We finally got our flywheel back. It is all machined. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. John sandblasted it, welded it up, repaired it, just kind of machined this flat. He did weld some of this up and then machined it. Same difference on this side. I've already test fitted it on the crank. It's exactly the size that we need it. And here's my solution for the flywheel bolts. These are ARP bolts for Porsche. And it's the only ones that I could find that were a cap screw that were a few sizes larger and came in a six count. These are 12 by 1.25. And luckily these things fit right in there the only thing we need to do now is just drill these out a little bit larger yes ladies and gentlemen we are going to keep it diy drill it out ourselves let me walk you through how i'm going to go about doing this and just look at the size difference between these things however this is one of them that's been sheared off but if this doesn't hold i don't know what will so we have our drill and our tap this drill specifically size for this 12 millimeter by 1.25 tap. I'm just gonna turn this flywheel over. I'm just gonna take this drill bit, let it center itself in there and drill straight through it. And we'll tap one of these holes. My thoughts is we're gonna tap this so this thing just threads in to the crankshaft as well as the flywheel. I think that's going to give me the best shot at 
kind of a DIY solution for the issue we've run into, which is shearing off the flywheel bolts. And for those of you that are wondering, and I know some of you have left a comment down below saying I should contact ARP, and I did. I said, hey, do you have anything that will fit this bolt pattern that is a cap screw? They looked and they said, no, they could potentially make them in nine months and would cost me $300 a bolt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. And on a little bit of a side note, I did get a hold of Clutch Masters, told them what I'm looking to do. They could make me a whole new flywheel for a $75 setup fee plus the cost of a new single mass aluminum flywheel, which that would have been another 575 bucks. You know, I've already spent the money on a flywheel and a clutch that's costed around $1,000. So let's see if we can't make this work and then for our built engine, I'm still waiting on those pistons from JE. Who knows how long that will take. They did say an estimated time of this month, which is March. So my thoughts are to get this back together, do some sleeper videos where I'm just going against Mustangs, Camaros, what have you. And hopefully those videos do well enough towards where it will fund doing a who knows maybe a dual mass flywheel setup because we already have this one broken in and money doesn't grow on trees. I'm not rich, okay? <laughs> and something else that's been brought up was having the crank machined at a machine shop, letting them do the enlarging of the bolt holes in the crank. And I think I'll save that for the built engine for now. For those of you, and including myself, that are on a budget doing this, this will work. I think it'll work just fine. I mean, hell, we machined the block for the larger ARP Dodge Neon studs, and it worked out just fine. Kind of made me wonder why I paid all that extra money for the machine work. It's a peace of mind, sure, but can we do it ourselves? Yes. So let's go ahead and drill this bitch out. A little bit of cutting oil. Center yourself on there. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, let's get this tap going. See if we can't make this happen. I just about have all of the holes in the crankshaft enlarged and I'm gonna squeeze you guys in there's not a whole lot of room and i'll show you what i'm doing and it's working out pretty well i'm just using the flywheel as a template i got some grease at the end of my drill bit here's the last one we need to do and we're just gonna let the drill eat this thing i'm not gonna press too hard and we're just gonna take our time with it start to speed out fast because it just kind of seems to really want to bite in Initially, just trying to keep it as parallel as I can. And eventually we'll get to a point where the shards or the shavings just gonna push out along with the grease and then I'll clean it and then we'll just kind of rinse and repeat until we push all the way through this crankshaft. So there we go, it's starting to push out because we're starting to catch a lot of crap. So I'm going to wipe this off, put some fresh grease on it, and then we'll continue. Okay. Ooh, whoops. All right, let's see if I can't squeeze in there. There we go. And we're gonna have to go back, obviously, clean this flywheel up, make sure we don't have any grease on the flywheel surface. But that's the least of my concerns. All right, time to clean it and regrease it. Round three, we're almost through. I'm 
I'm gonna stop there because we're almost punching through. I want as little crap to fall into the oil pan as possible. We'll clean it, regrease it. What do y'all think? We're gonna punch through it this time? Hopefully, hopefully so. Yeah, I think that's it. Let's inspect our work. Now I'm gonna take my cheap little magnet and try and pull as much of this crap out as possible. Camera's not focusing, but I'm sure you can see the fuzz on there. There goes the end of our bolt right there. That originally sheared off, so. Okay, whew. We've got one more hole to tap. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing this just real quick. And then we gotta figure out our reluctor ring situation. It says not to use a magnet around the thing. However, it is a little scuffed up. The magnet is on the outside, but I've been using a magnet to just pull all kinds of shards out in hopes that I don't have to toss in a new rear seal as well. Let's get to the tap portion of things and then we'll figure that out. It's gonna be a tight fit, but. We just got some grease on the end of our tap here. They're trying to keep this thing as straight as possible. And it's just going to want to feed in on its own. It'll want to straighten out. Hardest thing is just getting it going. I'm trying to do this and show you what I'm doing, but man, it's limited space here. We almost got it though. Starting to thread in. There we go. Starting to bite, bite in and I'm just backing out just a little bit. Clear some of the crap out of the way. So we're just gonna keep doing this until we bottom out. I'm gonna move you all out the way because I really need to get under here. And I'll show you the final results. So there we go, the grease caught quite a bit. We're gonna clean that up and then we're gonna chase the threads one more time. So that way it just spins freely and then we'll flush everything out with some brake cleaner. And I'm using my magneto over here to get in there and grab as much crap as I can. Not too bad, got some fuzz. All right, I think that'll get it. Wipe this thing down, and who knows, maybe I'll just toss a flywheel on and start it up and see if everything's okay. My main concern is leaks and not reading the crankshaft position. Okay, I think we're ready to toss it on, see if the car will run. Hopefully the reluctor ring is okay. We don't get any oil leak. I'm just gonna toss the flywheel on for now. I did enlarge the holes a little bit bigger. Also had to give it a little bit of a chamfer because these ARP bolts do have a little bit of a shoulder. So let's toss it in, bolt it up. We're not gonna torque it completely down. We'll let it run for a second and uh, see how she does. See if it's nice and centered for one, if we get any leaks and if she runs. I'm going to toss it on and then we'll start it up. Well, everything lined up pretty nicely. I just sunk them in with the impact. However, <laughs> we've got a lot of stuff just kind of hanging in the way. It is getting late. I think I'm going to hold for you guys. It'll probably be a minute, but for me, it'll be overnight. I'm going to get some rest. Think about this. Make sure there's nothing in the way. Play it safe. I still want to start it up. I just don't want to tear anything up in the process. So we'll see you in the morning. It is the next day. Let's see if we can fire this thing up. 
Hopefully our reluctor ring isn't destroyed. We don't have a rear main seal leak with all the little shards and crap from drilling out the crankshaft. All right, we got everything all hooked up. We'll see if we get any new air codes that do pop out. Man, that thing's still looking dope. Got things tied out of the way with some twine. We're just gonna run it for a moment. So let's fire her up and see how she does. And it'll probably run like doo-doo since we don't have our charge pipe hooked up, but I'm sure it'll be fine for now. Well, here goes nothing. notice the belt was not squeaking so we got that all situated yes well there's no crankshaft position sensor but license plate lamp out i'm concerned about that one heater control circuit yeah 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 we got a lot of that disconnected right now then the rest of this crap is just either we don't have it hooked up or we need to address it but i'll take you guys along the journey on getting all these mechanical things taken care of but oh yeah they were lying about that <laughs> <laughs> we need to replace the light. So now I'm going to remove the flywheel and then we'll bolt everything back up, torque it down to spec, and we'll get everything back together. I got the flywheel off, the rear main seal's leaking, no errors, and the instructions say, let's get this little, little guy out the way, and the instructions say to put blue Loctite on the threads and ARP lube underneath the heads. I also put the ARP lube around the bulk of the head of the bolt. So now I gotta drive these things in. It's gonna be pretty tight in there, so I'm not gonna be able to film this, but we gotta torque it to 95 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss these in and we'll get the flywheel and all that stuff on. And uh, it's, it's gonna be a little time sensitive since uh, we're using Loctite. So I'm gonna get after this. I'm excited to get this thing back together. So let's go. We got the flywheel on, bolts are torqued to spec. Well, I torqued two of them fully to 95, the rest to 65. And with the way this engine is currently just hung with the transmission out, the engine was really just really moving them pretty bad so i decided to use the impact gun to tighten up the other four a little bit more until they were really snug so i think that will work just fine if not you guys will find out in a future video now we just need to toss our transmission and subframe back in and i forgot a couple other things in store such as getting rid of the map sensor and i'm going to do a, a breakout sensor and put the air intake temperature sensor right before the throttle body so we can monitor what the temps are going into the engine and rather than choking this intake down to 2.75 inches we're just going to extend this three and a half inch portion all the way to the turbo this is a four inch inlet i think that will help us be able to maximize the horsepower get this mass airflow sensor out of the way and we'll solve our issue with not being able to put it in reverse because of that tube that goes right above the shift fork or selector whatever you want to call it so we're gonna have to make that come up and we'll have to rethink this we've got our boost controller to install along with our watt box so lots to look forward to and for those of you that are concerned about the shards in the oil pan i'm not too concerned about it after all this is just kind of a test engine until we get the built one back in a little bit of a test mule we'll we'll do an oil change after a complete heat cycle flush it out and i think it'll be just fine also don't forget we are giving away a gt3582 turbo from max speeding rods the same exact turbo we have on the car so go to this video right here this link this video and go and comment gt35 if you haven't just yet comment gt35 and you'll be entered to win you must be in the contiguous 48 states not be a friend or family giveaway ends april 4th thanks for tuning in be sure to subscribe give this video a thumbs up let me know what you think down in the comments and until next time peace out with your peace out